Today we're visiting with Upland Game Supervisor Jesse Kohler and we're going to talk about the upcoming grouse and partridge seasons. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. Jesse, it's been a kind of an unusual year, very dry. Yeah, this, this is an exceptionally dry year, as everybody knows. And this background is probably a little bit of a, of a misnomer for North Dakota or a biased view for North Dakota. We've got a few inches of rain in the last two weeks in, in Dickinson. Uh, however, most pastures aren't gonna have this much cover in them. And it's been really difficult for, for a, lot of, a lot of folks, farmers, ranchers, uh, and also for the wildlife on the landscape. And of course, when hunting season comes, you have to be really careful because yeah. of the dryness. So, so all hunters headed to the field this year are gonna have to be really, really careful for fire conditions. The uh, um, best thing should be to go online and look at the North Dakota Responses website where they can find information on burn ban restrictions, which even if you're not burning, it might include restrictions on off trail travel and also on the fire index, which, which can also affect what you can and can't do in each county. Um, and more than that, just out of respect for landowners, even if the fire index isn't showing extreme, it is dry out there and there are gonna be spots in all of North Dakota where, where fire hazards are gonna be an issue. Let's move into sharp-tailed grouse, Jesse. A lot of your survey stuff uh, happens in the spring. Yeah, we started out our survey season in mid-March for sharp-tailed grouse. Uh, we start looking for all the active leks. We have 22 sharp-tailed grouse census blocks that we counted this year. Um, and those are township sized blocks everywhere from southwestern North Dakota all the way to Grand Forks County, North Dakota. Um, and we, we go to those blocks, we try to locate every dancing ground or lek as we call them. It's a historical dancing ground that they gather at. And once we locate all those starting April 1st, we count all the males that show up on those, those dancing grounds. It's a really, the males go almost every morning, so it's a stable uh, index we can use to, to see how the population is doing. This year, the numbers were, were up slightly, about 12% statewide. Um, it was different in different areas, but we were going off of you know, four consecutive years of increases for our sharp tail numbers on our spring survey. So numbers looked really good for sharp tail grouse. Um, ruffed grouse in the Pemina Hills and Turtle Mountains were about the same as last year. Those two coming off of highs after two or three years of increases. Jesse, this whole summer, as we just talked about, was dry. Habitat conditions, you know, aren't the best. Yep. What did you find out with your brood surveys? The tough part about our brood surveys is that they're designed to be run on dewy, wet mornings. Most, most upland birds are going to gather at roads to, to dry out their feathers, um, pick gravel, and basically be gathered along those gravel roads. And so we drive roadside surveys all across the state. Um, for pheasants, the standard route is 20 miles, and then we extend those and drive a little bit further to try to pick up uh, sharp-tailed grouse or partridge or turkey broods. And this year, because it's been so dry, one, the birds don't need to go to the roadsides to, to dry off, and two, even when we have slightly dewy mornings, there's enough short grass and, and really short to, to little to no cover in areas where the birds can, can remain um, and, and dry off without going to those roads. Partridge was about the best species we had, faring about the same as last year, and it's partially uh, because of our survey methods and partially probably real numbers. We don't have the habitat out there, the cover out there, so we likely didn't have reproduction like we would have wanted to on a normal year. So from your spring sharp-tailed grouse surveys, the numbers were up. So the adult population likely is what we're counting in the spring. They're likely up slightly. Um, some of those might not have survived, but you haven't heard any reports of mass die up, so they're likely all gonna be on the ground still. Um, but most hunters are shooting about two out of three birds are juvenile birds. So those juvenile birds are just not going to be there this year. That we've seen similar brood sizes. So the birds that had broods early enough and were laying eggs before, before they got, got really dry and the birds would have been dehydrated and the cover was low, those broods did survive all right. Any areas that are better than others? Yeah, if you actually one of the best ways probably to scout this year might be looking at the drought index maps. Um, you know, right here, this this greenery is pretty recent, but the whole stretch from from about Dickinson down to Mott, uh, maybe 20 miles east or west, did get more rain than the rest of the state. Obviously, still in a drought, and we were 60% you know, of our of our annual rainfall in most of this region. 
but that's better than 40% of our annual rainfall, which a lot of the remaining part of the state received. So, so we're doing a little bit better here for, for grass conditions, a little bit more grass to walk. Um, bird numbers will probably be better for sharptail and partridge uh, in the central portion of the state following the Missouri River. And that area does have, you know, traditionally more water. So as it was dry this year, there's still cover around those marshes and potholes and some of that. So that might be good good stuff to work. Uh, are there still two areas of the state that are closed for sharptail grouse hunting? Yeah, there are two areas that are in the one in the northeast around Grand Forks County, and then the other one is down by the Cheyenne National Grasslands. Those areas are closed due to uh, prairie chickens being in that area, and we want to protect from incidental harvest. So hunters should be familiar with those maps and those, those borders. It's in the proclamation and it's also online if people want to see which areas are closed for sharp-tail grouse. And speaking of prairie chickens, we, don't ha we haven't had a season for a number of years. And Correct, yeah, the two species that will continue to be closed, sage grouse and prairie chickens, uh, their numbers just haven't, haven't come back like they were in the early 2000s. So our prairie chicken season will remain closed this year. Okay, let's move on to rough grouse. Yep. How are numbers looking for rough grouse? Rough grouse are, you know, pretty unique that they're only in two populations in the state, one in the Pemina Hills in the northeast corner and then one in the Turtle Mountains. So rough grouse hunters in the past two years have had pretty good luck at finding birds. The numbers have been up. This spring, all of our rough grouse surveys were, were slightly down, um, down, down more in the Turtle Mountains than they were in the Pemina Hills. Uh, so, yeah, it might be a little tougher than last year, but we've been coming up for two or three years in a row, so I think those numbers should be better uh, than, what, than what hunters are used to from at least five years back or, or a few years further back. One species that seems to do a little bit better with drier conditions are partridge. How are partridge numbers looking? And partridge numbers are, it's an interesting one because their numbers are always, always low across the state so we you know you don't go specifically targeting partridge most of the time because you'd strike out usually it's an incidental species people target as they're as they're pursuing sharp tail or pheasants um, however they they are at recent highs right now and this year they, their numbers are doing okay that's the one species on our reproduction surveys where we've seen kind of flat line trends instead of declines um, so, so that's been good. Their, their brood sizes, they can have a lot of chicks, so anywhere from, from seven or eight chicks up to in the low 20s for chicks per, per pair of partridge. Um, and we have seen some of those large broods this year. They really like weedy fields and edges of fields. So sometimes on a dry year when you get farmers who give up on a field and all the weeds come up, that can be ideal for partridge and, and really help our partridge population. One thing hunters can do to help manage these species is turn in a, a winging envelope. Yep. Explain that a little bit. Yeah, we appreciate all our hunters who send in wings of harvested birds. We have envelopes that you can request online, and if you've sent in envelopes in the past, likely you'll get a new envelope or a package of envelopes at the beginning of the season. Um, but we collect those wings both to look at the ratio of young per adult, which kind of in a year like this where it's difficult to survey our upland birds, those numbers really help us confirm or, or, or break our, our understanding of what we think is going on with the reproduction season. Um, it's kind of a look back instead of a look forward, but it looks at our reproduction and also when the peak nesting season was of this year. So we can age the wing of every juvenile bird we get figure out which week they, about which week they hatch. And then from all that data, we can look at when upland birds are hatching and coming off of the nest. That's, we call that the primary nesting season. And that's really important information for a lot of, a lot of management decisions on when we should start haying or end haying um, on our management areas and other lands that we, that we operate on. So hunters hitting the field this fall, there's still birds around. Uh, I'd say the most difficult parts of this year are going to be the habitat conditions. This, this past year looks really good, but there's going to be a lot of past years that, for sharp-tailed grouse that might have had cover in the past that this year probably won't have cover. Um, you'll be able to see for half a mile that there aren't birds before you even walk a field in some of the areas in our, in our grasslands. That could be good because I'm guessing a lot of those birds are congregated in, in you know, the woodland or the brushy draws and areas where they found cover. So some of those areas could be really good, but there'll be less, less total acreage to, to walk. The bird numbers aren't, you're not gonna see the juveniles like we normally see. 
um, but some of those adult numbers that carried through from the past years should still be should be good in pockets of, of North Dakota. So we just need rain. Yeah, and statewide, everybody's been saying that we need rain, and um, especially if we could get some rain before before fall, it would be nice to see some vegetation shoot up before winter. If if we go into winter as conditions are, there's going to be really low cover, and it's going to be really hard on wildlife this winter. A lot of great information, Jesse. Thank you. Thank you.